Created in 1979, the Ghana Geology and Mines Commission, GGMC, was established from the Department of Geological Surveys and Mines. The agency plays an integral role in the operation of Guyana's natural resources sector by helping to shape regulations, procedures, standards and guidelines to promote sound environmental management in all phases of the mineral industry. This week on Eldorado Shines, we will take a closer look at GGMC's role in environmental research and development and how those efforts complement Ghana's overarching policy of sustainable development of its natural resources. To tell us more, here is Kieran Husbands from the agency's environmental division. We have a, a three-pronged mandate and one of it is part of occupational, we're responsible for occupational health and safety, we're responsible for environmental compliance and we're responsible for research in environmental data. And when I speak about research, we talk about, we go to the pristine areas as well as mining areas. We collect baseline data and so that we can be able to monitor, as mining develops, we can be able to monitor the effects that mining has on the environment. Guyana is making more lands and resources available for mineral production and investments in the natural resources sector. These initiatives are being pursued in keeping with the country's commitment to protect the environment. The division pays close attention to the operations of mining companies, particularly those that fall within the medium and small scale category, to ensure that operators are complying with regulations governing the sector. In Guyana, we have basically three types of mining, large scale, medium scale and small scale. For the purposes and for in our context, we mainly look at medium and small scale because that's the largest components of mining operations that are actively going on in Guyana right now. In a small and medium scale sector, we basically for we start we look at occupational health and safety as in first steps. When you have your concession, make sure that campgrounds are cleared of falling trees. Campground working around are cleared from trees that may fall to injure persons. Um, we also, when you start to mine, we look at things like tailings management, ensuring that none of the tailings has been going into our water systems or polluting our water system, water systems. And if so, we make sure we take um, mitigative or corrective action to stop these things. We look at mercury use and handling, as in the proper storage of mercury, the proper use of mercury, not burning mercury in an open air, open environment, where we try to recycle our mercury now, because there is um, there is equipment out there, a technology out there now, where we can actually recapture and reuse. Um, mercury safely, sanitation, pot toilets, garbage facilities, we look at all of these parameters, drainage, all of that. In 2013, a new international convention to control mercury emissions was open for signing in Japan in response to the reality that mercury pollution is a global problem that no country can address unilaterally. With a growing number of small and medium-scale mining companies, GGMC pays keen attention to their level of compliance with regulations and is continuously working to raise awareness and their understanding of the need to employ safe mining practices. When it comes to the, 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 the different parameters of compliance when it comes to the small and medium-scale mining, it can vary from area to area, um, but a lot of awareness out there because we have a lot of officers who are a lot more interactive now with the miners and stuff like that and are trying to enforce these um, parameters. So we, when it comes to like, compliance of like sanitation, compliance of tailings management, it's things that we've especially been, been relatively high. They have some situations where we, have, we are facing some difficulties like in trying to control the, the, the turbidity of water. Well, turbidity is basically the visual aid of what water looks like, if it's murky or if it's clear. And this is because of, you know, we, because of the type of mining that we use, because we do sluicing, which involves a lot of water, volumes of water and stuff like that. And if they have some escape and stuff like that, it can basically alter our creek's coloration and stuff like that. And that's the area where we're finding some challenges, but we are, we are, trying to come up with measures and ways to where we can uh, minimize that effect on it, where we're promoting complete recycling of water, where we're not allowing any water to escape into our environment. Or if they do, if it does escape, it has to um, escape within the, or in, within the limits or, or limits that have been stipulated by our regulations, which is basically a mining camp up, um, discharge over 30 NTUs. 
and um, so there are steps where we're trying to make sure we mitigate and help reduce these impacts. Um, sometimes, like I say, you, you will find we, we have some challenges and stuff, but you know there is a strong awareness out there, and we've seen that miners are trying to work in a more environmentally friendly manner. We've been working steadily from time to time, and we've been doing a lot of awareness campaign. We in the environmental division, a lot of awareness campaign from time to time. Almost every time we, we go out into the field, we usually take out pamphlets. We hold informal discussion with miners as it relates to coming on board, understanding the regulations, and implementing them. But I guess from air theory, there always is a challenge. But we're working continuously to get things on board. Apart from that, I find generally speaking over the years that more miners, small and medium scale miners, are coming on board, are adopting to the regulations and implementing them. What we have found with GGMC is that the miners are um, on more, more instances than, than, than few. They are, they are willing to comply. They are, they are always willing to make an effort. Whatever new rule, whatever new regulation comes on board, they, they make a genuine effort. A lot of times they are hampered by some, some missing, missing aspect of, of it. They might not be physically ready. They might not have the exact resources. For example, one example, when we brought in the idea of dry, man dry mining, okay, everybody interpreted it to, to mean that, okay, in order to do dry mining, you have to have an excavator. Many small miners, they were not in position to go and, let's say, pay down or lease an excavator at the time. But over, bet between that time, that time frame to now, we have, uh, let me see, uh, an explosion in terms of the number of excavators that are in the industry. So we at GGMC, we recognize that, okay, we have these things take time, but we are still going to make sure that it's, it's out there and people know that they have to do. So that is, that is also why we, we kind of phase in our, our new rules. A number of tests are routinely carried out to ensure that mining operations have minimal impact on the surrounding environment. In the environmental division, most of our uh, testing is based on water quality. We do this to ensure uh, that is there any problem existing out in the environment so to be able to pick it up at an early date and be able to take corrective action. Some of the tests that we do includes uh, collecting water quality and testing for turbidity on a fortnightly basis. Um, in addition to collecting turbidity samples, we are also tasked with collecting uh, samples for pH, conductivity, uh, TSS. Turbidity is basically the scattering of light caused by an amount of particle in a column of water. And this indicates to us whether the water is above uh, a certain level as specified in the regulations. pH is basically a measure of the hydrogen ions in the water, and this is an indication of how acidic or alkaline a water we can be. And this is important for us since we, we can measure this and this in collaboration with the temperature which is also taken can also give us an indicator as to if certain metals maybe like mercury can become more mobile within a waterway. The Guyana Mining School and Training Center Incorporated was established to improve education in technical training for the mining sector. A grant agreement is in place between World Wildlife Fund Incorporated and GGMC to develop a curriculum for the mining school. You would have heard me mention that turbidity is one of the most popular tests that we do in the fields. So this is a visual indication as to what the water quality looks like. And I have here a number of samples with different ranges of turbidity, ranging from less than one to a thousand. We have here NTUs of 30, and NTUs is the units in which we measure turbidity. And this is the level of water that is expected to be discharged from a mining operation. Once we get past 30 NTUs, you get into anything ranging from between above 30 to anything to 1,000. And this, is, this will be like, for example, one extreme of what 1,000 NTUs will look like. Once we happen to take a sample like this within a waterway, then action, corrective action is usually taken. The agency is also mandated to take steps against companies which fail to comply with regulations. If we come and we find an operation is in non-compliance, 
the first steps we do is we'll issue something called if it's an offensive charge, if it's an offense or if it's just a warning and stuff like that. If it's an offensive thing, they obviously issue something called cease work orders. Cease work order now basically stops that operation. We list the breaches and we recommend what is the corrective action that has to be taken before this ban can be lifted or you're permitted to work again. Basically, if it's where we see is like gross negligence, whereas direct tailings discharge, fines will be attached to these things. And before you even start working, you have to it basically be a, a legal process now where you're charged and you, a penalty will have to be paid. The Ministry of Natural Resources and the Environment is creating conditions for the responsible and sustainable exploitation of the country's natural resources. Operators are encouraged to mine with the environment in mind. The agency, in outlining regulations to mining operators, stresses the importance of compliance and the need to operate in a manner that is not overly destructive to the environment. Basically, the reuse of our lands is to manage the, manage the use of our lands properly. That's one. Um, two, even though it's an economic benefit for them, they have to do it in a responsible manner because we like it or not, this is our environment and we have to basically treat her as if we would treat our own families. Um, so it's important that they adhere to these regulations for one, not just that, their safety as well, their safety, their benefit as well. Because if they just go and they do it in, a, in an ad hoc manner, this is when the dangers of you're, you're losing your life and you're not being able to reap the benefits of your, of your hard work. The Ghana has signed on to the concept of sustainable development, which in the mining concept, mining context, would be ensuring that the resources that we extract now, that there is enough resources that will be available for future generations to extract and use in the same manner or at the same rate that the present generation is using. So in this in mind, it's imperative that the miners they adhere to the regulations and the, the laws and the, the aspects of GDMC that we try to enforce, the enforcement measures that GDMC put in place at this present time, because we always have to think 25 years down the line, 100 years down the line, when the new miners are going to reflect on what their parents and their grandparents did. And it's, a, it's an in our benefit to make sure that we leave a proper, a healthy environment and also enough resources for them to utilize. Now a signatory to the Minamata Convention on Mercury, Ghana recognizes the environmental and human health risks associated with its use. Efforts are being made by GGMC to encourage mining operators to use alternative methods for the extraction of gold. In the GGMC, we actually have a processing unit, mineral processing unit, where we're actually coming up with alternatives to mercury or mercury-free technologies, whereas we have concentrators. We try to recover gold without the use of mercury. But in the interim also with miners, especially in the small and medium scale, because some of these technologies, there's a, a, you know, a cost attached to it. But in the interim for now, we're basically ensuring that miners are very responsible and are cognizant of the dangers of mercury and making sure that they use it in a way that it has minimal impact on the environment. So we ensure that they, they have to use retards where they actually burn the gold, recover mercury, and they recover over, I think it's like 95% of mercury when they use this type of technology and they get to reuse it so it's a cost benefit to them it's less material they have to go and purchase so those are one of the ways we try to help you know mitigate the way in which mercury is looked upon and used right now in the industry the Ghana Geology and Mines Commission continues to encourage mining operators to adhere to the rules and regulations that exist with the understanding that not only this generation, but many more to come stand to benefit from the country's resources if managed in a sustainable manner. The regulations that are enforced by GGMC are for their benefit. And when we at GGMC, we make a rule or we make a law, or we, we are thinking about the miners. So we are, and we, that we already know that we benefit from mining, Guyana benefits from mining, so it's important for them to at least give us a, a, an ear and try their best to comply. Abiding with the regulations is not just a way of trying to enforce laws on you, but it's a, it's a case where you have to look at your responsibilities and your, your, your well-being also in a safe manner. So for me, my, my major focus or my major push would always be 
take it where your safety comes into hand and not just concentrate on you but your future generations because these are some of these resources are not they're not renewable sources and if we don't do it in a responsible manner then what is left for generations down the line whereas in land use where we can convert or leave it in a state where it could be reused again The Ministry of Natural Resources and the Environment held a stakeholders workshop at the Chedichagan Research Center Red House on March 7, which brought together participants from several state agencies as well as the private sector in an effort to create new partnerships for the development and protection of the environment. This form of dialogue and this form of uh, engagement should not be a one-off event, but rather in a much more structured way and so from time to time we will be reaching out to the environmental community and those who work, those who volunteer and those who just Guyanese who have a passion in terms of caring, protecting and ensuring sensible management of our environment and of our rich natural resources. As business operators, we need to be responsible. Stop littering. Do the right thing. Participants were exposed to presentations from the various agencies highlighting the challenges that they are facing and possible ways of overcoming them with assistance from the private sector. As you may be aware that the establishment of the ministry in late 2011 represented a significant and far-reaching institutional change in Guyana's natural resource and environmental management sector. Many of the challenges facing natural resources and environmental management stem from weak linkages between key sector agencies and a somewhat fragmented governance approach. The Ministry's primary focus is therefore in harmonizing policy and management in the natural resource-based sector and better mainstreaming of conservation and environmental management priorities through its strategic plan 2013 to 2018. The Ministry of Natural Resources and the Environment has embarked on a number of policy and project initiatives that are focused on improving environmental governance and management, which ultimately aligns with the strategic plan. The Ministry recently held its 2013 sector review at the end of January under the theme Towards a Green Economy, Balancing Economic Development and Environmental Stewardship in Guyana with stakeholders' participation. The team acknowledges that economic development and environmental stewardship intersect and therefore are not mutually exclusive. This team takes note of the fact that stakeholders' participation and input cannot be discounted if we are to effectively address environmental challenges. Another essential component of this review phase is to praise all of the environmental stakeholders of the environmental strategic vision of the Ministry for the year 2014. The intention of this consultation is to bring together all environmental groups, activists, relevant NGOs, government agencies, and civil society. The MNRE and its agencies are door, doors, donors, and practitioners. The doors in the MNRE are the EPA, the GGMC and the GFC, which are charged with uh, GFC, which are charged responsible to ensure sound environmental management to minimize impacts <coughs> to the environment. The EPA has responsibility for the entire gamut of environmental issues, whereas the GGMC and the GFC efforts as doors are funds are focused specifically in the mining and forestry sectors. Now let's look at some of the doors in the MNRE. The donors in the MRE are the GGMC, the GFC, and the Guyana Land and Surface Commission. These entities typically donate funds to help do doors <coughs> to ensure sound environmental management. <coughs> All of the agencies of the MNRE can be classified as practitioners. Since they are expected to steer government agencies, scientists, stakeholder groups, or groups towards an outcome that will help to keep the economic the ecosystem running in a healthy manner. Our challenge really is dealing with solid waste, wastewater and industrial waste. So the categories there are highlighted. Refuse, waste rocks, stockpiles, in the case of solid waste, tailings, 
very big problem. Groundwater from mine pits, uh, we don't have underground mining and we don't have uh, large scale open pit mines at this point in time, so that's uh, somewhat uh, an area that isn't a, a threat at this point in time. Industrial waste, Many of these problems arise from an attitude that is, um, I would like to think, a very casual attitude to responsibilities in, in, in the mining sector. Next slide, please. Where it comes to tailings, we find that we have certain guidelines that ought to be, to be used in the way we have discharges going into our creeks and our waterways. And we find that there is a call for use of mechanisms, tailing points of search and circuits to deal with these things. So that our particulates that get into the waterways in particular are not um, issues that become a hazard to our community. I always encourage your passengers not to throw garbage out of the window. Stop littering. Do the right thing. Minister Prasad emphasized the fact that there can be development without destruction of the natural environment. Time to time, there are important issues and important questions that are asked in terms of what is our developmental outlook and how much are we willing to compromise the environment, as it were, to bring about development and bring about wealth, bring about prosperity for people. And if we reflect on that particular query, we have to then go back to our national development documents, strategies, and the outlook of successive governments and certainly what is necessary and required to take our country forward. And one, docu one such document we can go back to, which is in a way outdated, uh, has more or less uh, gone past its time, is the National Development Strategy. And then if we can look at our Poverty Reduction Strategy, then our National Competitiveness Strategy, and more recently our Low Carbon Development Strategy. And one cross-cutting element of all those documents has been how it is do we strike and achieve the balance of developing our rich natural resources and at the same time managing and effectively managing our environment and creating as it were that level of harmony. And if one look and one study those documents, those developmental guidelines, we would see that, and it must be recalled that these documents emanated from the people of Guyana through extensive consultation, it recognized that whilst there may be conflict, it recognized that it is not a situation of one or the other. That is, we either develop our natural resources and move ahead with development, or we do not proceed in that direction and we focus only on the issue of preservation of the environment. But those developmental documents and the policies uh, automated therein speak about us moving ahead with development, moving ahead with prosperity because we recognize that our major economic growth poles will come from the, the utilization of our natural resources. But at the same time, given due regard and given due attention both at policy as well as programmatic levels in terms of management and sustainable utilization of those resources but effective and sensible management of our environment.
must do everything we can to keep our surroundings clean. Stop littering. Do the right thing. On Thursday, March 6, Minister of Natural Resources and the Environment, Robert Prasad, inspected ongoing construction work for Guyana's first petting zoo and other enhancement works being carried out within the botanical gardens and the national parks. Welcome to Guyana, the gateway to South America. A pristine haven of abundant natural resources. We are a nation born in sacrifice and enriched by our togetherness. When we play, we celebrate every effort. When we celebrate, we salute more than success. We exude our right to move forward. Check us out on the internet for this and every episode of Eldorado Shines. Just go to YouTube, search for Eldorado Shines and start watching. Or like us on Facebook and receive instant updates. You've been watching Eldorado Shines. Do join us again next week for another program. Until then, do remember, we all have a role to play in protecting the environment.